41 year old man lived alone in an apartment located in a residential area in Nara, Japan. He was unemployed, broke, and broken. The only thing that was helping him move forward in life was his objective. Before the 8th of July 2022, this man was a nobody. His family, friends, and colleagues haven't heard from him in a while. Even some people in his own building had no idea that he existed. The only people who were expecting to hear from him were the investigators, who believed that he would run out of cash very soon and would be unable to afford his regular expenses. But he didn't care about his finances. The only thing that he wanted was to achieve his goal. On the 8th of July 2022, he would finally be heard by everyone on the planet. Tetsuya Yamagami. Tetsuya Yamagami. Tetsuya Yamagami. Tetsuya Yamagami. Tetsuya Yamagami. I think he's 41 or 42. Who was Tetsuya Yamagami? What exactly was his end goal? And what led him to execute a plan that not only shocked Japan but also the entire planet? I am Viska and welcome to the Crimeverse. And this is the case of Tetsuya Yamagami. Tetsuya Yamagami was born on the 10th of September 1980 in Mie Prefecture, Japan. Yamagami was born to wealthy parents who ran a local construction business. It was all going well until tragedy struck as his father committed suicide in 1984. At the time, four-year-old Yamagami had a younger sister who was just one and an older brother who was blinded in the right eye due to a childhood cancer. After his father's death, his mother took over the business. Yamagami was a good student. Nicknamed Kotetsu at high school, he joined a basketball club as his extracurricular activity. He maintained an excellent academic record. Teachers would often call on Yamagami to answer questions in class and let other students see his notes. After he was accepted to an elite school in Nara Prefecture, his junior high classmates said, Of course, it's Yamagami. Just what you'd expect. Even though he was described as quiet and reserved, Yamagami belonged to the cheering squad for three years when he was in high school and became known for screaming at full volume on both hot and cold days. The school's baseball team was talented enough to compete in the national tournaments and Yamagami cheered as loud as possible in the stands of Hanshin Koshin Stadium. He was nicknamed the leader for his enthusiasm. According to his friends, he loved his country and wanted to choose an occupation in which he could be of use to society. Hence, while growing up, Yamagami consistently expressed a desire to become a firefighter. However, he wrote in his graduation yearbook that he didn't have a clue what he wanted to do in the future. Therefore, it is safe to assume that there were little to no problems on the academic front. Most of his friends who knew him at the time said that he was a good man and had no issues. However, at home, circumstances were different. After Yamagami's father committed suicide, his mother was left raising their three children, which included a five-year-old with cancer, a four-year-old named Tetsuya Yamagami, and a one-year-old daughter. As a result of these distressing factors, his mother turned to religion. The religion in this case was the Unification Church, a controversial Christian new religious movement. The sect was founded by Reverend Sun Myung Moon in Korea in 1954. Reverend Moon converted to Christianity when he was only 10 years old 
and according to him when he was 15, Jesus anointed him to carry out his unfinished work by becoming apparent to all of humanity. Now the teachings of the Unification Church were bluntly based on Christianity, but some of its claims were outrageous to say the least. In 1959, the Japanese branch of the Unification Church was established and was certified as a religious organization in 1964. The Agency of Cultural Affairs classifies the Unification Church as a Christian organization. However, I believe many Christians would disagree with the statement. In Reverend Moon's theology, Korea is the Adam country, the home of a master race destined to rule the world, and Japan is the Eve country, inferior to Korea. It teaches that Eve had an entanglement with Satan, causing the mankind to fall from grace, while Moon was now destined to bring mankind to salvation. Japan has provided 70% of the Unification Church's wealth and between 1987 and 2021, 35,000 complaints were made alleging that the church had forced people to make unreasonably large donations, amounting to about 127 billion yen or 938 million dollars. Between 1991 and 1998, Tetsuya Yamagami's mother joined the Unification Church. She was a single mother with three children at the time, but after joining the church, she began to grow distant from her own children. The mother contributed 20 million yen when she joined the organization and 30 million yen shortly after. Three years later, she gave another donation of 10 million yen. After Yamagami's father passed away, life insurance payments totaling 60 million yen were made. In 1999, his mother sold the property she had inherited from her father, and she ultimately filed for bankruptcy in 2002 after giving up close to 100 million yen to the church. after the Yamagami family filed for bankruptcy. His uncle continued to provide financial assistance to the family throughout these difficult times. But his mother refused to stop donating to the Unification Church. Even Yamagami's brother pleaded with their uncle to help them since they had nothing to eat. The mother had apparently pleaded for money many times, but after a while his uncle had enough and turned her away by splashing a cup of tea at her. The once promising student, Tetsuya Yamagami, had to drop out of college because of their financial condition. It was reported that Yamagami began to hate the Unification Church as he believed that the church was solely to blame for his family's downfall. His uncle said that Yamagami was plagued with the thought that his life was a mess because of the organization. In 2002, when Yamagami was only 21, his mother filed for individual bankruptcy. Yamagami joined the Japanese Navy in August of the same year. He was posted to the Kure Naval Base and assigned to the destroyer JS Matsuyuki. In January 2005, when Yamagami was only 24, he attempted suicide, hoping his brother and sister would receive an insurance payout. But the attempt was unsuccessful. He was discharged from the Navy in August 2005. According to his uncle, if Yamagami had not been so poor, he would have made a different professional choice. After his term with the Navy ended, Yamagami held a string of part-time jobs including one at a land surveying company. He earned his credentials as a financial planner and real estate transaction specialist during this time. Yamagami usually left his job after a year or so. The longest he stayed at a job was five years. In 2009, his mother's failing construction company was finally shut down. Now, as I mentioned, Yamagami believed that the family's financial downfall was a result of his mother's donations to the Unification Church. 
He became estranged from his mother over those donations and slowly the family became dysfunctional. There was a time when he couldn't take his mother's religious fervor anymore and he finally left home. But despite everything that happened, he continued to worry about his mother and frequently visited her. It was no secret that he loved his family members, especially his siblings. But in 2015, his older brother took his own life. His brother had a long time struggle with cancer and he was not able to afford his medical treatment. His funeral was held at their home. Yamagami calls out to his brother's body, Why did you have to die, you fool? If you'd stayed alive, you could have gotten through this. This tragedy greatly impacted Yamagami. After his brother's death, Yamagami flitted between jobs as a temporary worker. He had worked as a forklift driver at a factory in Kyoto Prefecture since October 2020. However, he rarely talked to his co-workers. He was rude to his superiors and his co-workers didn't like him. Yamagami found himself increasingly isolated at his workplace and ate meals alone in his car. He was not the same man that he used to be. He was not this nice guy anymore. And the only thing that he wanted was revenge. He blamed the Unification Church for their downfall and wanted to assassinate Reverend Sun Myung Moon's entire family. But at the same time, he was also aware that it was an unrealistic task. He was broke and in order to carry out an operation like this, he had to visit South Korea, which for him was unaffordable. Now we know that the Unification Church is an organization based in South Korea. But how did this organization spread its roots in Japan? In 1964, Reverend Moon officially established the Unification Church of Japan with the help of Ryoichi Sasakawa, a well-known fascist and a war criminal. And the whole process was supported by Japan's then Prime Minister, Nobisuke Kishi. Kishi helped found the Liberal Democratic Party, or the LDP, the biggest right-wing conservative party in Japan. The current Prime Minister of Japan is also a member of this party. So anyway, deep bonds were formed between Nobisuke Kishi and the Unification Church. The sect shared Kishi's commitment to anti-communism. Kishi was actually a very good friend of Reverend Moon. The church's headquarters in Japan was built on the land in Tokyo, once owned by none other than Nobisuke Kishi himself. When Moon was convicted and jailed for tax evasion in the United States, Kishi wrote a letter asking President Ronald Reagan to correct the injustice and release Moon. At this point, the organization's forcible recruitment of young people in Japan had already become an anti-social problem. But Kishi still thought that Reverend Moon, the cult leader, was sincere and valuable. This relationship was passed on to his son-in-law, former foreign minister Shintaro Abe, who attended a dinner party held by Moon at the Imperial Hotel in 1974. His son Shinzo Abe continued this relationship and as of 2022, Abe and the Unification Church had very strong ties. Now Shinzo Abe's grandfather Nobisuke Kishi passed away in 1987 and four years later his father Shintaro passed away as well. So as of 2022, the only high-profile Japanese man alive who had strong ties with the Unification Church was Shinzo Abe. And hence he was also one of Tetsuya Yamagami's primary target. Shinzo Abe was not an average person. He was the longest serving prime minister in Japanese history, who just left office in 2020. He was born on the 21st of September 1954 to a prominent political family in Shinjuku, Tokyo. Although as a boy, he aspired to be a filmmaker, Abe's family history led him upon a political path. Abe viewed his grandfather Nobisuke Kishi as his number one role model. 
and was influenced by many of his beliefs like Kishi's aggressive stance on communist China. Abe attended Seiki Elementary School and Seiki Junior and Senior High School. He studied public administration and graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science from Seiki University in 1977. From 1978 to 1979, Abe attended the University of Southern California where he studied English as a visiting student. After taking courses in history, international relations and political science for three semesters, Abe left. He subsequently became active in the Liberal Democratic Party or the LDP and in 1982 he began working as secretary to his father Shintaro Abe who was Japan's foreign minister. Abe married Aki Matsuzaki, a socialite and former radio disc jockey in 1987. The couple had no children having undergone unsuccessful fertility treatment early in their marriage. In 1993, Shinzo Abe won a seat in the lower house of the parliament and later held a series of government posts. He garnered much support for his tough stance towards North Korea, especially after that country revealed in 2002 that it had kidnapped 13 Japanese citizens in between 1970 and 1980. As a conservative, Abe aimed to pursue a more assertive foreign policy and improve relations with the United States. Due to term limits, Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi was forced to leave office in 2006 and he was succeeded by none other than Shinzo Abe. However, this term was short-lived as he resigned one year later in 2007. Five years later in 2012, Abe was formally elected as a Prime Minister for the second time and later he would get re-elected twice in 2014 and 2017. He finally retired in 2020 as the longest serving Japanese Prime Minister. Abe left behind a complicated legacy. To his supporters, Abe was a pragmatic realist who sought to build a strong Japanese state that could protect the Japanese people and culture in a dangerous regional neighborhood and world. To his critics, he was a nationalist and historical revisionist whose obsession with increasing the power of the state led him to violate democratic norms. But without a shadow of a doubt, Abe was a magnificent world leader. Most political observers remember Abe for elevating Japan's place in the global governance system. But from Yamagami's perspective, his politics and foreign policies were never an issue. He only wanted to burn the Unification Church to the ground which, let's face it, was not a realistic aim. He allegedly had plans to target members of the church including the head but switched his focus to Abe instead after viewing a video message at a virtual church-linked event on the September of 2021. Now it's important to mention that Abe did not belong to the church but he appeared as a paid speaker at the church's events, one of which was in September 2021, which included a special guest uh, whose name was Donald Trump. Abe's close association with the church is exactly what made him Yamagami's primary target. He believed that he could hurt the church by taking out Shinzo Abe. Yamagami's initial plan was to assassinate a high-ranking official of the Unification Church, but later decided to target Shinzo Abe instead. Yamagami initially considered making a bomb, but eventually decided to change his plan after realizing it could kill innocent bystanders when it exploded. So he decided to use a gun instead because it could readily fix on a target. Now Japanese law differs significantly from the US law. Due to Japan's strict gun regulations, gun crimes are not only rare but also culturally unfathomable. In 2021, there were only 10 gun offenses and only one person died. So assassinating Shinzo Abe with a gun seemed unreasonable because we all know there was no possible way that Yamagami was getting a gun. Well, except if he made one.
Tetsuya Yamagami allegedly decided to change his target to Abe after learning of his video speech to the Unification Church in September 2021. Now in order to kill Abe, he needed a gun and there was no way he was getting one. So he decided to make one. Now remember, Yamagami was no rookie. For three years, he served in the Japanese Navy. He watched gun making tutorials on YouTube for months. He also rented an apartment in order to dry his homemade gunpowder. He later rented a garage in Nara for the same purpose, costing him 15,000 yen a month. At the time, he was unemployed after resigning in May 2022. He was 600,000 yen in debt and had 200,000 yen in his savings account. His one-room apartment's monthly rent was 30,000 yen. He spent most of his loan on equipment for making his homemade guns, which he test-fired in a facility linked to the Unification Church on the 7th of July 2022. On the same day, he went to Okayama to attend Abe's election campaign and assassinate him. But he later gave up. On the evening of the same day, it was decided that Shinzo Abe would enter Nara on the very next day. Abe was initially scheduled to deliver a speech in Nagano Prefecture on the 8th of July 2022 in support of Shansiro Matsuyama. That event was abruptly cancelled on the 7th of July following allegations of misconduct and corruption related to Matsuyama and was replaced by a similar event in Nara Prefecture, the home of Tetsuya Yamagami at which Abe was to deliver a speech in support of Kei Sato, an LDP councillor running for re-election. Nara police inspected the site on the evening before the event, and the head of the prefectural police had approved the security plan a few hours before the event. On the 8th of July at approximately 11.10 am, Sato began speaking. Abe arrived 9 minutes later, and began his speech at around 11.29 am. While Abe was delivering his speech, Yamagami was able to approach within several meters, despite the presence of security. At around 11.30 am, Tetsuya Yamagami shot at Shinzo Abe. The first shot missed and prompted Abe to turn around, at which point a second shot was fired, hitting Abe in the neck. Abe then took a few steps forward, fell to his knees and collapsed. Tetsuya Yamagami did not resist, and hence he was detained by Abe's security. Abe was initially conscious and responsive after being shot. Shortly thereafter, he was transported to a local hospital by an emergency helicopter with a wound to his right side of his neck and an internal bleeding under his left chest. He arrived at the Nara Medical University Hospital in Kashihara with no vital signs which is probably the result of cardiac arrest just before his arrival. At 2.45, a press conference was held by Japan's current Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida, who stated that Abe was in a critical condition and that the doctors were doing everything that they could. Abe's wife, Aki, arrived at the hospital at 4.55 p.m. and eight minutes later, Abe was pronounced dead. At the time, he was 67 years old. Shinzo Abe was the first former Japanese Prime Minister to have been assassinated since Saito Makoto and Takahashi Korikyo, who were killed in 1936. Most political leaders cancelled all campaign events for the remainder of 8 July. Campaigning resumed the day after, on the 9th, with major party leaders vowing to not allow violence to disrupt the democratic process. 
In the afternoon of 11 July, Abe's casket was transported to the Jojoji Temple in Shiba Park of the Minato Ward of Tokyo. A Buddhist funeral for Abe took place at the temple on the next day. Major democratic world leaders paid tribute to the former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe after the political titan was widely credited with reviving the nation's economy. On the other hand, 41-year-old Tetsuya Yamagami was arrested at the scene for attempted murder. The charge was later upgraded to murder after Abe was pronounced dead. He was transferred to the Nara Nishi police station upon his arrest. He was described as being calm and have made no attempts to flee. He had no regrets and didn't care about the impacts of his action. Yamagami had no prior criminal history. As of today, formal charges have not been brought against Yamagami and he is currently held at the Osaka Detention House for a mental evaluation until November 2022 to determine if he is mentally competent to be indicted. His mother finally came out and apologized for hurting the Unification Church. This case is still active and I'll keep you updated with new details. Now, Yamagami sort of got what he wanted because the Unification Church is currently in the spotlight due to certain questionable practices that have been going on for a while now. However, the sad thing is that it all had to come at Shinzo Abe's cost. Now Shinzo Abe was a politician and as we all know, some liked him and some hated him. However, this event had nothing to do with his politics. And all in all, it was a very sad event as we lost one of the greatest world leaders of the 21st century. Now, I can understand what Yamagami went through. He lost his father at a young age, his mother joined a cult and he also lost his beloved brother to suicide. He had a brilliant mind and could have done so much good. But sadly, he chose to put all his brilliance into making homemade guns with which he killed a legendary world leader. And now for the rest of his life, he will be remembered as an assassin. And that is tragic. Now, if you found this video fascinating, you can like, subscribe, yada yada. But more importantly, I'd like to know what your thoughts are. So please comment down below. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned and more importantly, stay safe.